Hello, uh, my name is Richard Wade Martins. I'm the academic lead and coordinator for the Oxford Alzheimer's Research UK network. And I'd like to welcome you to this series of talks on this podcast that will explain to you some of the interesting, exciting work underway researching Alzheimer's and related dementias here in Oxford. Dementia is a major problem in today's society as we're aging, but our researchers in Oxford firmly believe that dementia is not part of normal aging. Dementia is a disease, and as a disease, it'll have a cause and therefore also we think a cure. So here we present some of our work underway in Oxford, right across the spectrum of the translational research, starting with uh, looking at some stem cells to try and understand how stem cells can help dementia, all the way through to uh, caring and helping people cope, look after patients with dementia, through to a talk on the imaging that we have here in Oxford. I hope you find the work interesting and exciting. Thank you very much for coming along this morning. Uh, my name's Richard Wade Martins. I'm the academic lead and coordinator of the Oxford Alzheimer's Research UK network. Um, it's my pleasure to, to introduce to you and to chair the, the discussion this morning for us to be able to share with you uh, much of the work uh, that's underway uh, in the uh, Oxford uh, AI UK network, um, and I'll explain to you what that is. So we've got a range of, of talks talking about different aspects of translational research uh, into Alzheimer's and related dementias. Uh, so we'll have a few talks and then a coffee break and during the coffee break there are um, tea and coffee and cakes in the hall uh, with many uh, information stands where you can go and seek information uh, about uh, further information about dementia and caring uh, and, and coping um, and looking after uh, individuals with dementia. So I hope you enjoy the talks and also do go and have a chat to the people at the stands. Many of them will be tremendously helpful. So I'll just start off by taking five minutes uh, to tell you what is the Oxford Alzheimer's Research UK network. Uh, it's a new uh, partnership uh, which was relaunched in September last year. The funding was doubled and it has allowed researchers in the Oxford area uh, across three uh, universities, the University of Oxford, Oxford Brookes University and the University of Reading uh, to work closely together. Uh, and you'll hear uh, talks from uh, individuals at each of those uh, institutions this morning. So very much Oxfordshire, um, sort of down as far as Reading, uh, bringing people together. So this funding brings researchers together to encourage collaboration, uh, encourages collaboration within the network, so that is between these three institutions, and also between networks. There are 15 Alzheimer's Research UK network centres nationally, uh, shown here on the map, and there are funding opportunities for individual members of each centre different centres to come together and work collaboratively and it really does provide an opportunity for people to meet and work with scientists that they wouldn't have known previously and may have had ideas that can come together with really interesting research. So it, this, uh, the funding for the centre uh, provides some collaborative uh, research meeting funding, we uh, fund, allows funding for public engagement events such as this, uh, we fund travel grants, so this enables uh, young researchers in particular to go to scientific meetings and tell the world about their work. It's all very well working away in your laboratory, doing a particular piece of work, but explaining what you do uh, to the outside world is really important. It also funds a small amount of pilot grant money, so maybe a young researcher has a new idea, they don't have enough data to go to a big funder uh, to get some uh, initial pilot money to get things going but they can come into our network get a few thousand pounds to launch an idea and also opportunity to get some funding for small amounts of equipment and also we have uh, a couple of uh, early stage researchers within the network who are providing advice to young scientific researchers um, the twisted winding career path of scientific research is quite tortuous at times um, and advice uh, from those who are a little bit further along it to those just behind them can be really useful and it's good to provide that information and the network at Oxford also every once in a while the turn comes round to present the uh, host the National Alzheimer's Research UK conference which we did last year so March 2014 we had uh, about 300 uh, researchers from across the country uh, converge on Oxford and this is a photograph of some of the uh, organizing committee those who helped uh, us do it. It was tremendously successful, really exciting buzz, 
um, of the different scientists getting together. So I just wanted, just in this last slide, to, to convey to you a bit of the excitement about the opportunities available for research into Alzheimer's and related dementias at the moment, and the amount of exciting, interesting stuff that's happening right here in your hometown in Oxford. So in December 2013, David Cameron at a G8 summit launched the Prime Ministerial Dementia Challenge. The message has finally got to the top that um, the huge um, healthcare implications as we become an older society of Alzheimer's and related dementias has to come to the top of the healthcare agenda. And it did with his speech in 2013, and that has generated a lot of funding opportunities. Um, and some of that money has come here to Oxford to do some very exciting things, some of which you'll hear about this morning. So one of which, uh, uh, which led or came directly from David Cameron's announcement was the UK Dementia Platform, also called DP UK, which is a large national study, uh, 52 million pounds across the country, a really national effort to better understand dementia. We'll be working with uh, studying, collecting some large uh, patient cohorts to study in depth. There'll be a programme led here by uh, Simon Lovestone here in Oxford to integrate together uh, patient records across UK hospitals to help us understand research. Uh, there'll be a new initiative for establishing more uh, brain scanners across the country so we can um, peer into the brain of patients using brain scanners to see if we're affecting some of the pathology. And there will also be uh, a big um, effort, eight million pounds of effort, led by me here in Oxford to establish six dementia stem cell centres across the country um, in Edinburgh, Manchester, Cardiff, Oxford, Cambridge and London, so really nationwide, uh, to use the power of stem cells uh, to better understand and study dementia. And we'll hear a little bit um, in a talk from Angela Bithell today from Reading about how stem cells are being so important uh, to help us understand dementia. So that's number one. Number two, really exciting, is the pharmaceutical industry essentially has a rather miserable record at developing new drugs and treatments for Alzheimer's in the last 20 years. And that's because it's really, really difficult to do. And Eric Caron, who now leads the research side of Alzheimer's Research UK, has come from pharmaceutical industry. And he told me that he never spent more than two years ever in the drug company industry without being reorganised and reshuffled. And he said that's no way to do long-term research projects to understand dementia. So he's driven an initiative in which there are going to be three new drug discovery institutes established across the country, one in Oxford, one in Cambridge, one in UCL. They'll work together in a network. They won't be competing, they'll be collaborating. And so we're going to have about 25 researchers for five years at each of those centres, 75 people focused on understanding new drug targets for Alzheimer's, Parkinson's, motor neuron disease, and they won't be reshuffled and reorganised. It'll be a stable structure for five years, 75 people across these three institutions working hard to better understand the disease and develop new therapies. Number three, which is led here from Oxford by uh, Simon Lovestone, is an initiative funded by the Medical Research Council to establish what's called a deep and frequent phenotyping cohort. So this is a cohort aimed to develop new biomarkers. So a biomarker is something you can detect in the blood, a protein maybe that's um, folded differently or present when it shouldn't be in the blood of a patient compared to a, a healthy control, and you can use this to monitor disease. There'll also be very intensive brain imaging on these patients. It's very small, it's only 24, but they'll be studied more frequently and more in depth than ever any other cohort ever has before. So again, led from here in Oxford. And number four, so that the fourth goal in the hat trick, if you like, if you can have four in hat trick, is um, the Oxford Parkinson's Disease Centre, which I lead. We've been running since 2010 for five years, uh, funded by Parkinson's UK, and we were refunded at the beginning of this month. And you may have read about it in the Oxford Mail and heard me on the radio telling about this work. So that means that we will have attracted 10 years' worth of funding to better understand Parkinson's in a large patient cohort, stem cell models and animal models. So it's a brilliant example of translational neuroscience, 12 Oxford laboratories working together in full collaboration, funding 15 people working across those labs. And we work, I've mentioned it here today because the mechanisms of neurodegenerative disease will actually very likely be in common. So by studying um, the three diseases, Alzheimer's, Parkinson's, and motor neuron disease, we'll get a better understanding of the whole disease uh, 
mechanisms. So that's what's going on, and these are the people that do it. So this is a collection, a photo montage of some of us in the Oxford network, um, which uh, Melanie Witt put together. And so these are some of the people you'll hear about today, and some of the people working very hard uh, to better understand Alzheimer's and related dementia here in Oxford.